What's up everybody? Ben here at The Spirit of Running and today I want to talk about my DNF at the Habanero 100 100 kilometer race. Um, the Habanero 100 had quite a few different race options. Um, everything from a 10K run up to a 100 mile option and you could do that solo or the 100K and the 100 mile had relay options as well. Um, just a few other things to think about it, uh, regarding the race. Um, the the race was a looped race. Um, you had a single loop. Everybody was on the same loop. Um, for the 100K, you did 10 loops. It was a 10K loop. Um, made the math pretty easy, um, but that was about the only thing about that race that was easy. Um, overall, I did a lot of running and walking and um, heat acclimation, um, but I gotta say just I'm not sure that any amount of heat acclimation I've done aside from maybe moving outside and just living outside 24 hours a day um, quite prepared me for what I was going to experience on race day. The race starts at noon on, uh, on Saturday and um, it was a, a shotgun start. The temperature at the start of the race was 107 degrees. With the humidity, the real fill was somewhere around 115, 116 degrees. All right, y'all, this is Habanero 100, 2023. Thank you for being here. 10, Woo! 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Woo! Let's go. Let's do it. The course itself had a whole lot of sand. Um, when people talked about this race, they'd always referred to the sand trap. And I, I imagine like there's a section of the course that had, you know, a fair amount of sand that you had to get through, um, kind of like an obstacle course. I didn't imagine that what would, what it would end up feeling like was that the whole loop was one giant sand pit. Was the entire loop a sand pit? No, I would say of the six miles on the loop, Probably three to four miles of it was covered in sand and, and so for me having not done a lot of running on that really fine kind of um, you know like super fine sand um, I just wasn't prepared for it. Uh, so two things that I just you know I wasn't prepared for. If I do this race again I'm going to do a lot more running on the beach I think. Um, it, you know it's kind of the only way to really um, you know I think uh, physically and mentally prep for um, that sense of every footstep just falls in and there's nothing to push off of. You lose all momentum. Uh, I went out with the plan to be super conservative on the first loop and I walked the whole thing. Um, at no point during the first loop was my heart rate under 155, 160. Uh, it was super hot, super humid. The sand just pulls everything out of you, and I think there's a lot of heat coming up off the sand as well, so it made it feel even even worse. Uh, I finished the first loop after about two two and a half hours, and um, you know spent a fair amount of time at base camp trying to you know bring my core temperature down, cool myself down. There was one aid station out on the course halfway through, and then there was a second self serve aid station about a kilometer from the, the start finish. There was some water and some ice out there. But really that 5K aid station was, you know, the only actual aid station where there was, um, I felt a lot of benefit. Um, you know, I think the 1K and the 9K aid station was just too close to the start and finish for it to be super beneficial, um, to me at least. Um, the second loop, uh, I really thought that, that was the end of my race. In the first loop, we heard um, the ambulance sirens multiple times. Um, I think four people were were you know taken out of the race by ambulance in the first the first loop. Um, just that first 10k was conditions were dangerous. Um, the second loop for me super slow again. Um, around the 5k mark, I started having GI distress and I. I spent the entire second half of the second loop um, trying not to, you know, be that that person <laughs> that uh, you see on the side of the trail. 
finishing the second loop um, had a had a lot had I, I finished right around 5:30, um, so I, I took another about hour back at base camp. Um, tried to get my stomach under control. Um, at that point, I had lost all nutrition and all fluids that I'd taken in. Um, so spent some time, you know, at the at home base, just trying to get food down, trying to get some hydra extra hydration in, um, and debating if it was safe for me to go back out. Um, going forward, I you know I, I did end up going out for the third loop. Um, and there's this phenomena right around dusk down here in the Houston area where um, the humidity dries up just a little bit and you get a little bit of a breeze and it, it almost just feels, you know, feels cooler. Um, the actual temperatures weren't much cooler at that point than they were during the rest of the day. Um, but because it dries up just a touch, you know, it does feel a little rejuvenating. So the third loop was probably the loop that I felt the best on. Um, still had some lingering GI issues that I was aware of, but yeah, I just, it was kind of one of those don't ever trust a fart situations. Um, you know, runners, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, on the whole, the best loop that I had, I had done. Um, so I felt really good in the third loop. Got back to base camp, spent some time, and then went out for the fourth loop, feeling you know pretty excited about it. And you know the wheels came off again. So in the fourth loop, um, you know I, the heat came back, the humidity came back, and it was it was pretty miserable. Um, spent a little bit of time at the halfway aid station, uh, just you know get trying to get some more food down. Um, you know, bring the core temperature, take a breath and get some, you know, um, get some cold water, um, on me. I was throughout the race, I had arm sleeves on that I was tucking ice into and I was dipping my hat into ice water. Um, just trying to, you know, provide as much topical cooling as possible. Um, in that fourth loop, same situation, um, uh, running through the night, still trying to, you know, cool myself down with just cold water and ice and, and keep, you know, the systems functional. Um, finished the fourth loop at 40 K and, you know, took some time, really wasn't sure if I was going to make it out at this point. I knew a hundred K wasn't going to happen. Um, I knew that this wasn't my a race for the year. My, my primary goal is to go out to Moab and pace a friend of mine and crew for him. Um, so I knew that if I go too deep in the hole, a, I'm going to lose a lot of training time. B, um, the heat uh, sicknesses um, that you can develop in those conditions can just stay with you for you know months and years to come after that. So I, I knew that I didn't want to go so deep in the hole for a non-A race, for a training race, um, that I was going to do any long-term or potential permanent damage. Um, took some time at base camp and decided 50k was a nice round number. I really liked the idea of, of getting that fifth loop in, um, but really wasn't, you know, wasn't 100% about it. So after some evaluation at base camp, decided to go out for the fifth loop, um, and I think that was a mistake. I uh, got halfway through, um, halfway to the halfway point and, and stopped to pee for the first time in a while. And it was a very unpleasant sensation. Um, my my back was sore. I couldn't tell if it was just sore from all the sand or if it was actual pain in the kidneys. Um, but it was at that point that uh, right around 42K that I decided, okay, it's time to call the race. Um, I'll get to the halfway aid station and then I'll, I'll cut it short. Um, so, you know, um, you know, pushed on to the halfway point got to the aid station and I, you know, I, I knew going into the aid station that the first thing I had to do was tell the volunteers, like, I'm done. I need you to call not emergency, but just call for a ride. Um, I don't want to risk going back out and, and, you know, injuring myself. Um, so at that point, my race was done 45 kilometers of the hundred kilometers. Um, it was disappointing, but again, I think that I've said this before and, and I'll, I'll say it again. Um, you call me the anti Goggins. Uh, I'm not the guy that says finish at all costs, no matter what. 
I'm not the guy that's going to say be hard, do hard, you know, do hard until you die. Um, there is a time and place for pushing and I feel like I pushed as hard as I could in that race, but I wasn't going to push to permanent damage. I wasn't going to push, um, you know, to the point where I needed to be, you know, taken out by an ambulance. The conditions overnight, um, had I gone down on the course, um, you know, it would have been hard to get me out. I'm not a small human. Um, so I, I needed to know my limits. I needed to know when it was time to stop and when it was time to push on. I think I could have pushed on and gotten to 50K, um, but I, I think that there was the potential for long-term damage just to get a number, um, you know, and to get a number that would still be a DNF no matter what. Um, interesting thing about the race, um, over 60% of the field DNF'd, so I'm in, I'm in good company. This was the hottest start that they've ever had at the race. Um, the hottest start before this was a start, a start temperature of 97 degrees and we started at 107. Um, you know, there were people who finished the 100K, there were people who finished the 100 mile. Um, and they did it, you know, they did it solo and they, they, they did a great job, you know, at it. Um, you know, but for me it was, it was, uh, safer to call the race when I did. Um, it would have been safest not to go out for that fifth loop, but um, you know, lessons learned. Um, I, I do feel disappointment in the DNF, but I, I feel no shame and I feel confident that I did what was best for me as an individual and also what was best for other people on the course because, um, you know, it's, it's not just about, you know, keeping myself safe, but it's about not putting other people in danger either. Um, and I think there was potential that, you know, if, if, if I as an individual pushed on, then, you know, and something had happened, you know, I, I could have hurt somebody else going down or somebody else could have gotten hurt trying to get emergency services to me. Um, you know, so moral of the story is, is definitely train hard, work hard, do hard things. Um, but at the same time, know where the safety limits are. Um, you know, push your limits, but don't break them. Uh, I hope everyone is, is, has had, um, you know, staying safe out in this heat. Um, hopefully it's going to break soon and we're going to get into the fall training and everybody's going to feel faster, feel just better out running outside. Um, but take care of yourself. Um, take care of the people around you. Uh, one of the things I love about the trail community is how, um, open everybody is and how aware everyone is of the people around them. Um, yeah, so, so check in on your friends, make sure they're safe, and uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you out there.